guys, how's it going? Justin here with Keystone Mountain Outdoors. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, what we're going to be taking a look at is Dead Air's new Xeno Suppressor QD mounting system. So you'll see here, I have it installed on my Dead Air Nomad, and I have that installed on a muzzle device on a CZ Bren 2 MS pistol, at least for the time being. This thing may end up being an SBR. More on this in a future video. As I said, we're talking about the Dead Air Xeno mount. So the Dead Air Xeno mount is a suppressor mount that is basically the in industry standard inch and three-eighths, 24 threads. So you could find, you could use this mount in your Silencer Co. Omega, your Dead Air Nomad, your YHM Resonator 2, uh, your Turbo T2. You could run it in a energetic armament box. There's a huge list of different suppressors that are able to use this mounting system. Now, there have been a lot of different mounting systems that have come on the market in the past couple years, and I've had the pleasure of trying a couple of them. I've done several videos on the different mounting systems on the channel. There are pros and cons to each. Now, I really like Dead Air's Chemo system. Dead Air's Chemo system is an absolutely phenomenal QD system. The only drawbacks to it are is weight and length. So the length of the muzzle devices doesn't really concern me. It's the length of the adapter that you're putting into the can. I want to say it's like inch and a quarter, inch and a half that you're adding to your suppressor, give or take a little bit. But as far as the weight between a muzzle device and the adapter, you're adding about eight to nine ounces depending on which muzzle device you go with. So you're talking over a half of a pound. So if you have a Sandman and it came with the chemo, that's great, that's fine. But if you have a Nomad, chances are you bought the Nomad over the Sandman because you wanted to save a little bit of weight. So as soon as you add that chemo to the Nomad, you're basically making it the same weight as a Sandman S. Now there's pros and cons to those, and we will be doing a Sandman S versus Nomad video in the near future. I have tons of experience with both. Uh, a good buddy of mine owns the Sandman S, so hopefully we'll be able to do that video in the near future. But it, me and a lot of other people that bought Nomads and bought uh, Silencer Co. Omega 300s and boxes and all those different cans that I listed, we wanted a shorter, lighter QD system. And there were some others on the market. Q did a pretty good job with the Cherry Bomb and the Plan B system. The only problem I had with the Q was that they didn't give you any sort of wrench flats. Now, Dead Air kind of did, it's very similar to the Q system, I, I'll say. It's a taper system. The taper is in front of the threads. That way it's gonna seal off a lot of the gases. I, I personally think that the taper should be in front of the threads like Dead Air and Q, and, uh, Q did. I, I'm not a big fan of the Griffin system with the threads in front of the taper. What I found is over time, they tend to lock up if, you, if you're not uh, careful in wiping them off all the time. I'll just leave that at that. But the, the Dead Air Zemo, Zeno system, the one thing that they did different than Q was they made sure they added wrench flats. So on the suppressor adapter here, you have it's inch and an eighth wrench flats. So you could use an inch and an eighth wrench or you could use a crescent wrench to be able to tighten it on or to break it loose. Another cool thing that they did was they made the, the mount to muzzle device attachment backwards threaded. So it's threaded left hand. So while traditionally you would lefty loosey righty tighty, this one's actually the opposite. You're going to righty tighty to take it off. Now the cool thing about that is it's going to be tightening your muzzle device to your rifle if it's really stuck and it's also going to be tightening that adapter to that can. So it's impossible to have a situation where you unscrew your suppressor and your mount sticks on your muzzle device or your muzzle device comes off your rifle. So that's a huge, huge advantage. Now, it is a, a, a taper mount system and it doesn't have a secondary lock and collar. So it does take several revolutions to go on, but I still think it's significantly faster than direct thread. Now, another big advantage to QD over direct thread in this case is, God forbid you had your rifle sitting at the range and you took your suppressor off to put it on another rifle or whatever you're doing, and somebody walks by and bumps your rifle and it falls over. If you were using a direct thread can and had bare threads, something that I've seen happen and is really a bad day is your threads could get messed up. And if your threads get messed up on your rifle, chances are you have to take it to a gunsmith and have him take care of that. God forbid your gun ever get knocked over with a suppressor QD muzzle device on there. Worst case scenario, you just have to buy a new muzzle device or your buddy that knocked it over has to buy you a new muzzle device. So that said, I kind of am becoming more of a fan of the QD systems, especially now that nowadays they're getting really light. Another Another big thing that the Xeno mount has going for it is the weight of it. So I'm going to roll in some pictures here, but I took some weights myself of the adapters and the muzzle devices themselves. 
And total system weight with a flash hider was coming in at 5.2 ounces. And I believe the muzzle brake was about the same. It was 5.2 or 5.3. The muzzle brake might've been 5.3 uh, with the adapter. So overall total system weight, you're adding a little over five ounces, which in terms of comparing it to some other systems, it's pretty similar to the YHM Curs. It's significantly lighter by a couple ounces than the Dead Air Chemo system. And it's about two ounces or so heavier than the Q system. So as I said, it's gonna be a little bit heavier than the Q, a little bit lighter than the chemo, but in my opinion, it kind of fills that, that, that perfect void as far as what it does and how it works. I think the fact that they use those left-hand threads in here and put wrench flats on it gives it an advantage and I'm willing to sacrifice the, those couple ounces over the Q to get that with the Xeno. And I'm definitely willing to trade off the weight of the chemo for something like this. Now, if you're going to be running full auto, maybe a chemo is a better option for you. If you're running full auto, what's a couple ounces matter anyways. Uh, this should never back off being that it's a taper, but it theoretically could, whereas the chemo is almost impossible for that thing to come off on its own. So yeah. Now, I really do like how Dead Air did these muzzle devices, and I'm gonna roll up some pictures here on the side. This is the half by 28 brake, and I'll be honest with you guys, it looks like a new and improved cherry bomb. I I've seen other people say that. I, I could kind of agree with that. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of these muzzle brakes or these compensator style devices for just shooting them on rifles. I think they kind of suck. But the advantage to this style of a compensator brake is that it does a pretty good job at breaking up the unburnt propellant gases. So like I said, this is an 11 inch 5.56 rifle here. Well, technically pistol at this time, but it's an 11 inch 5.56. 11 inch 5.56, you're gonna get a little bit of unburnt powder going into your suppressor. And what could happen is over time, that's gonna sandblast your blast baffle and you're going to start to see some erosion. So whenever you run a compensator brake like this, what happens is it's actually gonna help break up some of that stuff. It's going to prolong the life of your suppressor. How much, I honestly couldn't tell you. I just know that it, I've seen it happen and I've seen it work and I've seen it be advantageous to do. There's a reason why Q designed the Cherry Bomb to work with their titanium suppressors. Titanium suppressors by nature are a little bit weaker than steel suppressors. Adding this style of a compensator brake to it is going to aid in the longevity of the silencer, especially titanium silencers. So it works really, really good there. And what I have here is my 20 inch White Oak Armament SPR. We will be doing a video on this particular rifle here in the very near future. But the reason why I wanted to show you this one is because I have a half by 28 flash hider for the Xeno mount. Now, this is pretty much a carbon copy of the A1 flash hider. Many of you guys know it by the A2. The A2 is a little bit different than the A1 hider but the big advantage to the A1 is you don't have to time it. So you don't need to time this or the muzzle device, or excuse me, the muzzle brake, I should have brought that up. But you guys can see it looks like an A1 or to the, to the common man, you would say this looks like an A2 and it kind of does, blends in pretty good. And then as far as mounting the suppressor, it just goes on and like I said, it's weird because it's lefty tighty, but it screws on a couple revolutions and then you'll fill those taper seat and then just give it a little bit of a snug. You don't have to kill it now. One thing with taper mounts, tapers generally take about one and a half times the force to release them than what it did to take it on. So hypothetically, just for simple math, say you put 50 foot pounds of torque on this suppressor, you should never go that heavy. But just for simple math, if you put it on with 50 foot pounds, it's gonna take about 75 foot pounds to release it. Generally, that's the, that's the equation that they use for uh, for tapers. So yeah, it is kind of weird doing it, you know, the, the lefty tighty righty loosey. But the cool thing that Dead Air did do is as soon as I get this off, they actually put a on and a directional label on the, on the adapter. So that way, whenever you put it on, you could see that and you could be like, oh shit, I need to turn it the other way. I'm an idiot. I'm turning it the wrong way. So yeah, I mean, honestly, it works pretty good. I'm gonna take it off. I have one last rifle I wanna show you guys here. One last pistol, excuse me. It's kind of confusing. So what I have here is my 11 inch 762 by 39 PWS. This is a pretty, pretty sweet rifle. Uh, big drawback to this gun, 11 inch 762 by 39, uh, just like 11 inch 556 is kind of hard on suppressors. 
So I went ahead and did the 5H24 Xeno compensator brake. And yeah, it looks pretty good on this gun and it should help prolong the life of the suppressor and the blast baffle and everything like that. But just screws on, as I said, these compensator brakes, you, they are omnidirectional. What that means is you don't have to worry about shims or anything with these. So you literally just tighten them on. Uh, Dead Air recommends 25 to 35, I believe, inch pounds. Um, I just tightened mine on until I felt it was pretty good. I didn't hammer it, but I just gave it a good snug enough to where I didn't think it was going to walk off. But yeah, that's the Dead Air Xeno mount. If any questions about it, definitely feel free to hit me up. Definitely feel free to ask them in the comment section below. So far, my thoughts on the mount are that I think it's a pretty good mount. Now, I haven't had it the longest time. I'm sure it's going to work good as far as the just looking at it from an engineering perspective, it seems like it's made pretty good. I don't really see too many flaws with it. We have other mounts that are very similar to it on the market that have worked for years and years. So as long as the quality control on this is good, which it looks phenomenal, I'm sure it's gonna work absolutely great. Um, I'll definitely report back to you guys, but as of right now, I'm gonna give it a huge thumbs up. I really do like the way the muzzle devices look. I like the weight of it. I like the fact that it is, relatively compact they did add a little bit to this adapter but that gives you wrench flats it also gives you a little bit more room between the muzzle devices and the blast baffle which is going to also help a little bit in terms of your suppressor so yeah there's a lot of good things to this i don't really see too many negatives other than maybe cost these adapters are about 120 bucks or so, and the muzzle devices are about $80, which is pretty much run of the mill. So it's not the most expensive QD system, it's also not the cheapest. So, you know, you got pros and cons just like anything else, but hopefully in this video we covered a lot of the basics, a lot of the overview with it. Uh, and yeah, so I, I am going to be running the, the Dead Air Xeno system here for a while. If you guys are familiar with the channel, you guys may have known that I've been running the YHM Curves mount. The YHM Curves mount, just to kind of follow up on it and kind of tell you guys why I switched to the Dead Air Xeno. The big reason is the looks of the muzzle devices. So how much do looks matter to you? Some of you guys are probably going to say it doesn't really matter and other guys are going to say, yeah, it matters. And to me, I would say it's kind of middle of the road. But what kind of really weirded me out was the fact that the wear point of the YHM system is on the muzzle brake itself. And that's not a big deal unless you pin and weld. If you pin and weld, eventually that muzzle device, the, the ratcheting system, is going to wear out. You're going to have to cut your pin and weld job off. You're going to have to pull that muzzle device off and replace it. Another thing that kind of bothered me with that was the way the ratcheting thing, you always had to mess with that collar. It wasn't a bad system. It was actually a pretty good system. But I decided it was time to try something else. And being that the Xeno came on the market and it kind of fit the needs, and I thought that the left-hand threads were a great idea. I thought it was absolutely genius. I, I wondered for years why nobody did it. And as soon as Dead Air came out with it, I was like, man, Todd McGee is the man. And Todd McGee's one of the big engineers over there at Dead Air. So he's a great guy. I've had several conversations with him. But yeah, guys, that's all I got for you guys. As always, remember to train hard, shoot fast, and most importantly, be safe. God bless.